Went to a book fair today up in London, as well as a great comic shop, which I will talk about a bit later in the video. And I decided I'm not going to buy any books today, or not many. I'm just going to go up and have a look around. I might buy a few things. But of course, that didn't work out as usual. So uh, this is one of the books I bought. And this was for a fiver. I love these sort of books. Modern Publicity 48, 1979. And what's in it? Well, it's just basically illustrations from the period. It's just lots and lots of the magazines, the TV shows, adverts. And this is 1979, so it's just absolutely beautiful. I love this sort of thing. So, Also got another one as well. This one is slightly older, but not that much older. They also had a 1941 one. Unfortunately, he was asking for a lot for that. Quite often in book fairs, you can see on the table, that like you open them up, 250 pounds or something, 79 pounds, and you think, oh, I'm not spending that kind of money. But at five, I'm very happy to pay five pounds for this. And this one's a Publicity 39, Modern Publicity 39. I've got quite a few of these, and I love them. Got like 1966, 67, all those sort of periods. And uh, I haven't got this one before, 69 and 70. And this is uh, from uh, Reading Public Library. Actually, that one was from Berkshire Library, so obviously a, a source. But you've got just great designs all the way through this book. And again, lots of adverts. Now, it's not just the UK ones. So if you go in it, and it actually will say like Germany, West Germany, West Germany, Great Britain, and so on. So, it's, But it's got lots of examples of the books of the period as well. Just beautiful. Lots of uh, magazines, also TV shows as well. So you, you get the opening credits or end credits of TV shows, which I think just absolutely fascinating. I love those things. And also a lot of the like fonts that were of the period. Absolutely brilliant. Also, this one, Paris. And unfortunately, the staples are very rusty. I've put a bit of tape on it. It's fallen to pieces. Now, this one is from 1934. It's actually a slightly... Um, so I'm not going to show any pictures. It's not... But it's still not going to show it on here. The Paris magazine, but it really captures the, the period. It's got lots of adverts inside, lots and lots of articles in French, of course. But uh, got quite a lot of books, magazines in French. And also it's got, like I say, great adverts. I love that. Looks very nice. However, obviously that was the Christmas one, because it's got obviously Noel on there. Also got this one. Again, there must be piles and piles of French. When you go to France, Paris, whatever, Quite often you find lots of these markets and things where they have lots of these things and they're reasonably priced still. Don't seem to get that in the UK. For some weird reason, lots of that stuff's gone. All the stuff we had from the 1920s, 30s, must have just been, well, I guess the war, maybe, whatever. Well, obviously France was in the war as well. It's weird. Where did they all go, all these magazines? Anyway, Artisan Pratique. And uh, this is quite nice. It's a, sort of got a pattern design in there, which is very odd as well as um, some other lovely illustrations and designs. I'm, I really love designs, so it's just great to get these sort of things. You've got all the various, uh, various... Well, let's just get on to the next one as well. And it's a very similar one, this one. This is 1921, and uh, just beautiful. Art decorative. Now, I just think it's beautiful. Again, full of lots and lots of examples of the period. Just beautiful. Quite a big magazine as well. You can see it's quite a sizable one. And again, uh, this one doesn't have so rusty staples, but uh, again, another one of those magazines. Again, full of lovely illustrations. Beautiful. Now, this one's quite nice. I love this one. Jugend. And this one is from 1896. And I got this, well, actually, all these magazines I got for a pound. So sometimes, of course, you pick up, you go through them, and you think, oh, I'll have that. And then when you look at it later, you think, mm, maybe I shouldn't have bought that. But for a pound, it's still... I think it's just beautiful. It's got full of, again, beautiful illustrations. And I love it. I love these ones. They had quite a few of these, Jugend or Jugend. I'm not certain how it's said. Who knows? But it's, uh, again, it's um, obviously foreign. It's German. And uh, and also it's got, obviously, adverts as well, which is always nice. Really shows the period. Number six there. I don't know much about the magazine particularly. But uh, there's quite often I quite see them at... Uh, these uh, book fairs, and sometimes they go for a lot more than that, so I was quite pleased to pick this one up. I should have picked a few more up, actually. This one's got an unusual one, one I probably wouldn't have picked up if I really thought about it, because it's uh, singing. I love singing and music, obviously, but it's still, I just love the cover, so I just thought, ooh, and I just picked it up. And this one is from 1905, looks like, but it's got some lovely old pictures, and of course it's got uh, music. 
so I could sit on my piano and have a quick play of some of these uh, songs and also some of these other ones. I'm certain these were all great things back in 1905. This one's the last one. Canon. Wally Wood. I love Wally Wood's work. Now, I haven't actually got any Canon. So, uh, I have in the past had some Canon books. Uh, should have kept them. I haven't got any now. But this one, of course, again, this <laughs> is in French. But still, it's a nice, big, sizable format, which is really nice. Very nice quality. Just very sharp as well. And again, you can work out generally the gist of it. But it's all, I say, in French. Now, these ones were quite interesting. I must have... I was really pleased picking these ones. I love magazines, comics from places like Australia, Denmark, Sweden, whatever. Just, looks like they're just stories, of course, I'm fairly familiar with. Now, I assume, and I don't know, this one, War Battles, maybe, probably Harvey Comics, I assume, because it just got that style, that uh, logo that they, they had. But this is uh, number 10 issue, 1953, and it's not very... It's, Fairly thin magazine, you can see there. It's all in black and white, but still really, really nice little stories. And it is in English, strange enough, from Australia. And <laughs> War Battle is another one. Actually, the, the uh, person that had, had these was uh, just reading them while I was there. So as soon as he put them down, I thought, you know what? I'm going to have those. War Battles. And this is another one, 1953. Oh, that's July 1953. This one is June 1953. And again, much the same sort of stories. And, uh, oh, all in black and white again. But very nice. This is one, Consolidated Press Limited. Another one that's very nice. But this one, this is Australian as well. Slightly different. I assume a different company because the paper quality is slightly different. Or maybe it's just deteriorated. But uh, it's, again, very, very thin. Not many pages. I mean, we're talking only, I don't know, 30 odd pages, 32 pages, I assume. But this one, I think, is probably Battle Comics, is... Atlas Comics, an Atlas comic one. Just looks like it, especially the uh, also by the artists. As we go through it, there's a Manili in it. I think this one's a Manili. Let's just have a look. Yes, Joe Manili. So you've got Joe Manili there, rookie, which is nice. I love Joe Manili's but I'm looking forward to it. There's a book supposedly coming out. I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully it does come out about Joe Manili. I would just love that. It's weird that one artist like him, he just produced so much great work and yet sort of uh, not remembered in the same way. So Robert Sale, again, I assume, again, an Atlas comic, but still, nice black and white one there. This one's an unusual one. And where did this come from? This one is from London. Though weirdly, it says production France. Now, 1951, Joe Lewis, obviously boxing champion of champions. And it looks really great. I love the artwork. Slightly unusual, this one. However, let's just go. Oh, he's even got a muscle head, whoever he was. I don't know where that's from. I have no idea where this uh, Joe Lewis came from, the magazine. Obviously, it's an American one, but uh, no idea uh, the original. Uh, oh, there's other ones in the back as well. I didn't notice that. Victory for Jimmy as well, included. And also uh, another one, uh, Canvas, Canvas Pack, The Frozen Fury. Not familiar with those at all. Any of the stories, in fact. But, you know, I just thought, this oh, this big clue up there on there. A Fawcett production. It's obviously a Fawcett one. It says there, L. Miller, number two. So I assume that there was, obviously, issue one. No idea. But it's possible. Now, I love these magazines. They're not for everyone, but I love them. Nova. Now, I'm not even certain which. I think it was 1967. They're always stuck trouble when you go through some of these. You can never find the date and you go, where is the date? Oh, September 1967. That's another one. They're just brilliant. Just so much of the 1960s. Just really beautiful illustrations, adverts all the way through. Just glorious. They just really produced. But I think Nova's one of the best magazines from the 60s. And uh, that's a bit weird. It's got the uh, page upside down just to, just to throw. And also, let's say, great adverts on the back there as well. And of course, something about uh, a certain individual that will be soon there, uh, soon-ish. Cross fingers that uh, that he will be king at some point. The boy most likely to succeed. <laughs> so, uh, nice bit of Prince Charles there. And uh, 
The next one, this one. I have no idea what that means. How lucky, how's luck with the lady? Oh, she, okay. The eyes down. And another Nova. And now I didn't really look to see what you get. 1966, August 1966. And again, very much obviously of the period. And uh, got lovely uh, photos in it. Just beautiful. Next time you look in the mirror, read this. Uh, Lowry, lovely article about Lowry as well. These are just beautiful magazines. Got a few Novas now, three. That's it, I've only got three Novas. Now I have got a Nova book, which I absolutely love. It's got all the covers of Nova, just amazing. This one, Six Gun Hero, Heroes. So price six pence, old pennies. Uh, number 75, and again, L. Miller. Now this one, I assume, is a UK one, printed in the Republic of Ireland, it says there. And uh, this one has got, now, I, this is when I come to, I haven't been reading all the way actively through it. I did flick through them on the train. And uh, Tex Ritter. Now, I think Tex Ritter, maybe that's uh, an Atlas one. I don't know, it might be DC. Rocky Lane, I'm not certain. Anyway, I'm certain people say, oh no, that's Fawcett again. Probably Fawcett, actually. It seems to be quite a few of the L. Miller ones seem to be Fawcett. So I'd suggest that that's... And Camel's West is another black and white one. They're, they're very thin, of course, but they're just great. I say a pound. Perfectly happy pay a pound for this. This one's an unusual one. I have never seen this before. Now, this is Australia. Again, L. Miller of London. I don't know anything about this one. Maybe someone could put some comments saying, Jet Fury, one of the greatest of all time. No idea. Uh, you can see, obviously... The artwork there, I do not know who did this. And I have no idea if this is an American magazine or a UK one. Now it looks like an American one. I guess it's American. Just looking at the pictures there. But it's uh, still an interesting little magazine. And Jet Fury in Siam. See, this is the trouble, of course. I say it's American, or, but of course you've got a story there in Siam. So where's the stories coming from? So you got that, the end. It's very, again, very thin, but it's still fascinating. I don't know. Unfortunately, again, with a lot of these ones, is without doing a bit more research, and I haven't, it is that um, the period. Not certain when this was. Looks quite old. Could be 90, it's obviously 1950s, but uh, no idea particularly of the date. And it's obviously six old pennies as well. Eight old pennies, even. Now you've got Vampirella. I love it. And I thought to myself, maybe I've got this or not. I don't know. I've got quite a lot of Vampirellas. I love Vampirella and uh, great illustrated stories. Luckily, I don't have this one. 1972 annual. It's obviously full of pieces, page, but for a pound again. They're all, all a pound, these ones. Uh, I thought, you know what? I'm going to get that. And it's got soft. So I don't I can separate that. you got here 1972 annual. I love the way, actually, the way they've just done the writing slightly uh, different greys. How, we, how weird, how you just, origin of Vampirella as well. I assume the way it says, never before seen, that that suggests that it's, uh, no, I assume this must be of 19, yeah, of the issue six, issue one, issue nine, issue eight, and issue four. Some great little stories there. And we've got some Wallywood as well. Can't be a good old bit of Wallywood. And uh, Neil Adams as well. Actually, that's a lovely bit of Neil Adams. Really, really quite surprised by that Neil Adams one. Yeah, beautiful, lovely little Vampirella magazine. Another one of these Paris ones, again this one, I have no idea, I think it's 1935 or something. In fact, the advert on the back says 1935, so you've got an advert there. Well, I think it's a lovely little magazine. Again, very much of the time, and I can't show any of the pictures. There's nothing particularly that much, but there's, there's a few bits I don't want to show, and then get However, here's another one. This is obviously another French one. And I love these French ones. Or it could even be Belgium. I don't know. No idea. Something to investigate. Of course, it says in there, 18 francs. No idea about this either. No idea who this character is. Uh, it's a very weird sort of... Uh, uh, it looks like uh, the artwork um, could easily be very early. And I don't know, without researching a little bit more. Sort of things like detective comics from back at DC Comics from 1939. Just the style, just seemed that sort of style. I don't know, it just looks so quite old, very old fashioned. That, uh, you know, the, 
the cars. The cars, quite often, when you look at things, you think, those cars look 1930s cars. They don't look like uh, now. And you can see the style. You can just see that, that sort of empty space that seemed to be... They often did that. I would think, I'd, without a game, without, I must research a bit into that. But I assume that's American. I mean, obviously, it looks American. And uh, obviously with uh, French. But I love this thing. It's all great. And picked up a couple of those, actually. And more bits of... Uh, <coughs> going everywhere. All the... This one is Captain <laughs> Captain Yank. So Captain Yank, and uh, yeah, probably again another old story from I don't know when. This is nine. Oh, this one's nineteen forty-eight. Apparently, the actual comic that you got there. Just it looks the art style. I mean, it's obviously I assume American. But it just looks so old-fashioned. But it could be one of these one stories that were like at the back of uh, the magazine. Uh, Captain Yank. And there's no superhero element to it, which I mean doesn't mean anything because of course lots and lots of things. Captain Yank. The game could be Fawcett or something, I guess. Harvey. No idea. Again, I should know all these things, but I don't. Don Winslow. And you can see that's a big clue. Fawcett publication. Again, this is, of course, a UK one, printed in England by L. Miller. And it's, uh, again, very rusty staples there. But this one actually is in uh, colour, sort of colour anyway. It's not perfect colour, but it's reasonably colourful. Don Winslow of the Navy. And uh, it's also got some other stories as well. I can't even make that one out. There's a story at the back. Eagle Beak Brother. He'll even cheat a little in a good cause. I know, never seen it. This one's an unusual one. Uh, this is very unusual, in fact. I have no idea. Oh, this is 1920. Bon Point. Amusing, I assume, obviously. Amusing, comedic sort of thing, obviously. Uh, the man with the photograph reviewed or something. And I have no idea what's happening there, particularly. Someone's... <laughs> However, it's got some lovely illustrations. No, it's not illustrations all the way through, but it's obviously got some illustrations. And I think it's a lovely little magazine, but um, not very certain, obviously, for youngsters. However, another one. This one's at Winslow again, slightly different. But this one is an adventure, obviously, Captain Winslow. And uh, this one's from, again, finding the dates and these things. Oh, this one. Well, again, this is obviously... French, but uh, I just suddenly saw something about Italy there. However, 1948 again, this one. Most odd. And again, you've got a great little story there. And of course, it's all in French, but it does that doesn't particularly matter. You can genuinely work it out to a degree. And if not, just quick Google on the words you think. You know what? I'm not certain exactly what that means. But the general gist of it, I think you can work out without needing to uh, be expert in French. And this one, again, uh, Adventure of Sandra. No idea. And this is probably, again, very old, old-fashioned style. Don't know. Not certain the period, but I, it just looks so old-fashioned. Could easily be 1930s as much as uh, 1940s. Please put in the comments if you know about where that would come from or anything about it. I mean, I will investigate some of these. Collection of Bell's Adventures. Just a style, very unusual. But lovely. That's unfortunately lots and lots of flakes around here. Now this one's 1948 again. This is Monaco. This one's from Monaco. Obviously a certain <laughs> character there. Uh, no mention of his name, of course. And uh, you've got... Uh, it, maybe it does, I don't know. But it doesn't seem to. But it uh, looks very nice. And again, this is obviously... Yeah, I assume an American one. Could be French. Who knows? But it's a very, very nice little story there. But it's clearly, obviously, influenced by a certain character. And another one of... Uh, is this story about Raven again? It looks like uh, something... Oh, the Heart of Terror. Oh, Heart of Earth. And also another copy of this Paris magazine. Just love the ones, because they're just the period. Four francs. And again, you've got here, done. Oh, look at that. Just great. Just of that period, 1934, 35, I think. Again, again Rusty Staples. And heroic. Now this one's a weird one, very weird one. This one, a lady panther, and it's got some unusual stories. 
and of course some of it is uh, text but you've also got this one here you've got the story here again lady panther i assume no idea about her and sarawak no idea still and also you've got some other ones there, very short stories and again i have no idea where these come from these could be american ones until or maybe they're just done by french artists of the period i guess equally possible as well and finally for these ones this one uh, French again, but uh, just beautiful. Got full of beautiful illustrations. If you love illustrations, I think these sort of things are just great picking up because they're just beautiful. Just even if they fall apart on you, but you've got some really beautiful ones there all the way through. And again, another illustrations and also captures obviously the period. And again, which try and work out. Oh, 1886. That's the earliest one. I thought actually the earliest was 1896, but this one beats them all. 1886 which is pretty good. Actually, there were loads of newspapers at this uh, fair and they had loads of 1801 and things. And you look at them and think, great, but they're all about 12 or 15 pounds, which is fine, but they're very small. And you think, ah, no, not really. Anyway, next thing I'm just going to get to is this. I went to Gosh. I wasn't intending to go to Gosh because I went to uh, another shop beforehand and I thought, oh, I've run out of time to get the train. So I thought, I'll pop into Gosh because... Gosh, I love Gosh. It's in the centre of Soho. Just brilliant store. Much, much better than it ever was near the British Museum. Though I loved it in the British Museum. But it's still, when I go into the Gosh now, it is wow. Still, today, they had a special event. And I picked this up, which I was for really an excellent price. I was like, yes, I'm going to have that. Well, actually, to be honest, I left. And I thought, you know what? I walked down the road. I thought, I'm going to go and buy that. So I went, rushed back. Luckily, no one else had picked it up in the meantime. Because quite often when you go to these things, people pick up things and you think, oh. However, what's it about? What's this, this guy here? The Library of Gary Leach. And I must admit, I didn't know anything about him. To be honest, obviously a very popular artist. Obviously well known and loved. Lots of people took in there chatting about him, fond recollections, etc. So it's really nice. And they were holding a special Gary Leach state sale. And it was for today, which I just thought, wow, amazing. Just on this day. And it was obviously for, a, yeah, absolutely super impressive uh, book collection. Absolutely amazing. Literally, I mean, I could have, you know, if I could have had 55 hands and I could, or I had a truck outside, I probably would have thought, you know what, I'll buy some of those. Because they had, there was just so many books. Literally the whole of the main floor was full of books. From 1960s, 1970s, 19, real loads of obscure stuff, lots of omnibuses, Marvel masterworks. Not many, didn't see any epics. But there was Wally Wood, Alex Toth. I mean, stuff that, you just, it's just impossible near enough to find. Literally everything. You, it, it was a, and I know when I was chatting with a lot of people there, they were over the moon, just go, just finding items they have been looking for for ages. One guy was like Herbie, got Herbie volume two and three to complete his, I mean, just, wow. I mean, what an amazing collection of books that this guy obviously built up over his life. And I just, well, so definitely, I'm going to treasure this one, Captain America. And I've got a few other ones. I'm going to show those later. Not all of them from the, that. But gosh, it's, when you go to those sort of things, you think, quite often I put in comments and things, that we never have garage sales or sales of estates and those sort of things. And you think, why don't we have that sort of thing? And clearly today, strangely, we did. And, uh, well, this is an impressive book. I love this one. This is obviously Captain America, the... Uh, Brilliant tales of suspense, all those stories, all the way through to Steranko. And just with obviously all the letters pages and those things. Just a lovely book and totally out of print. Why they haven't re-released this? Maybe they will at some point. I hope they do. But it's, uh, I've been looking for this for quite a while because it goes for a lot. And it, I didn't pay very much for this, which is great. Now this one I bought and got just received. And uh, this is great. I love it. Slight little issue with it. Again, one of the things I do, I quite often watch uh, KFAB. I think that's how you say it. Something like that. 
however video channel and they're amazing you've got they show lots of great things and i thought oh you know what i must go and get a copy of that and this is the stuff it's full of lots and lots of let's just think got all the various things like their diamonds are forever just full of illust great illustrations these are obviously all the uh, it's a catalogue so it's got all the prices and this is obviously back in the 70s uh you've got spider-man falcon etc However, unfortunately, there was a slight issue with this, which was really sad because it was the, probably the best pages. Look at that. What happened? I don't know what happened there. Very odd. Misprinting that something went a bit wrong. Still, an interesting graphic effect, but unfortunately does slightly... Uh, what? However, this came yesterday. So it's not all totally book, book haul of this weekend. And The Blues album cover. I love these sort of books. Ooh, just sticking out there. Blues album covers. Just brilliant. It's just full of great album covers all the way through. These just... Yeah, you can see the examples there. I've got quite a lot of these. I'm going to do a book uh, going over them and show a little bit more later. But it's just beautiful. And also it's quite handy because I've got, of course, a certain device that I will not mention its name. An Amazon device is the best thing. And I love just saying, play, blah, blah, blah. Uh, hey, Boss Man, or um, A Long Way From Home by Brownie McGee and Sonny Terry. Sonny Terry, Sonny Terry. Muddy Waters, etc. Johnny Lee Hooker. Excellent. However, another book that was this uh, gosh bookshop. I had a couple of years ago a Frank R. Paul book, and it was really nice. Very nice book. This one is by Jerry Vest. And wow, this is a massive improvement on that original one. Just got full of really nice quality book. Lots of other examples. But the best thing about it, with all the examples, of course, is that it's got all the covers. All of his covers at the back. Wow. I mean, I know you could probably do searches on the web for those. But just beautiful. Dean of Science Fiction Illustration. That's... Uh, a really impressive book. And another book I got in Gosh. And I love Doc Savage and all those sort of... That. And this one is great because it's got lots of examples of his work. And also, it's got this. So you can see the models, which I just love. So you've got a model there and you can see the where it's... Not all of them. Not every page has got models, but you can see some that have got the models and then the illustration. What a absolutely wonderful book and also lots and lots of book covers and i love book covers so you've got another one there just absolutely glorious james bummer 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 i don't know <laughs> apologies the american realist that's easier to say also <clears throat> i got these as well valiant summer special this was at gosh as well i love these things summer specials always always have a place in my heart i just loved summer specials and used to, my mum used to work in news agents, and quite often during the summer I'd be around there, and I'd just be going through all of the summer specials. So literally every summer special I would read them all. Some I bought as well, some I didn't. And uh, you know, yeah. And also, of course, when you went to the seaside or something, you'd get one for the car or something. So I was just, I just love these ones. And this is Valiant Summer Special. Now I think this is seventy four. Maybe this one, or this one, 74. Because I've got two. Summer special. And there were low millions. Millions of annuals. Millions of comics. Bundles of comics. Bundles of TV comics. TV actions. Everything. Everything you could imagine. I mean, you could really build up quite your own collection with a lot of materials there. It was just amazing to go through. And I spent quite a while just going through it. Not really thinking, you know, I must buy that. Because I just wouldn't be able to lug it all home just way too heavy but i just love these ones and it's got some great stories but he has some sort of like compilations of sort of all the old uk ones as well the wild wonders and also you know just every kind of character wally wild and willie winkle no idea can't remember that one at all however the daredevils on the back this one very nice devil in i had this before i love atlas comics I know that's a bit of a, a weird thing to like, but it's just I just love the artwork in this. Great little stories. Regrettably, I got rid of it. 
I saw a copy of this in the Gosh sale, or obviously, uh, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get that. Devilina. Now, this is issue one, January number one. I think it was 1975, that sort of time. Just great, beautiful. And then also, I picked up this. Unfortunately, they have volume one. I would have got that as well. Archives, volume one of Green Lantern, the golden age Green Lantern. And I love these ones. You've got covers there on the back. Green Lantern, all American comics. And, well, just absolutely brilliant. You've obviously got a little introduction there. And then you've got the actual stories. I love the golden age Green Lantern. I bought many of those sort of magazines in reprint generally. I have got a few originals as well. But uh, I love these uh, books. They're absolutely amazing. And uh, I must admit, I always regret getting rid of my Golden Age Green Lantern archives because I've never brought Matt and Omnibus. It would be brilliant if they did. Now, the stories are very of their time. They're unusual. And Green Lantern is nothing like the Green Lantern that we know. Even the Green Lantern that we know now of this Green Lantern. Nothing like it at all. But still, wonderful. Oh, I picked this up on Friday. Infinity. I love this magazine. This one's issue 48. Great, great articles as ever. This one's got Scream. Got Love Scream. And also great letters pages as well as, let's just go to the introduction. That's the best of the contents or features as he says there. So you can see the general gist of, you've got Peter Cushing, Michael Parkinson there. You've also got Roy Castle. Really, really nice issue. Model behaviour. Uh, you've also got uh, about John Nathan Turner there, Ray Harry Harrison, Giant Scorpions and the Black Scorpions. And I love these. I just love these. Look at Silent Running. You've got the poster. Bruce Stern. Just brilliant. Not that I'm going to stick it on my wall or anything like that, but I could. And I don't know what the other one is. Uh, oh, Black Scorpion. So you've got Black Scorpion there. This is just a great magazine. And this one is issue 48. Really worth checking out in your local, wherever, news agents. And, uh, of course, you can always get the back issues as well. whole load of back issues. The last ones like Voyage of Sinbad, Doc Savage, Quantum Leap, Hawaii Five-0, Sid James. Just get the whole range of stuff. And, uh, of course, next issue, 49, coming out in June. And that looks really good as well. Got Tron, obviously, looking. Action Man, Magic Roundabout. So a lot to look forward to in that. And I also love these things as well. I love all the uh, celebrating 30 years. We belong dead. And uh, other ones as well. I always think the comic section, I would love to see an actual book come out of the comics. Because he's always putting a comic section in here. And I think they're just great. And also I've got this one as well. Mainly because of uh, the glam music. Sparks. New, and uh, so Ziggy Shark. That's, that's on Mojo magazine. Totally disconnected with comics and science fiction, etc. But that is the book hole of basically Friday all the way through the uh, the weekend. Uh, well, I hope you found this of interest. Please put in the comments below if there's anything that really interests you. What sort of things have you bought this weekend? Uh, have you bought anything great? Did you go to Gosh? Did you go to pop in the Gosh? And uh, because I think it was the most, you know, it's wonderful that uh, when you sort of, I mean, obviously it's sad that the, the guy died, but still at the same time, it is uh, absolutely, it's the first time I've ever been to a, like a sort of thing, a state sale. Quite unusual to go to a state sale, because of course you, you, you know that, and it's, um, but still, sort of the whole, just going through and looking at all the different items, and then, like I say, chatting with other people about their recollections and their thoughts about things, and it's just great, just really, really wonderful chat, and, wow, just amazing. Um, I just wonder how many were left and whether they will do another one. Because I can't, they might have got rid of everything. They were doing, they were doing amazing uh, when I was, people were buying lots of stuff. So who knows? Well, anyway, hope you have a great weekend. Bye.